Hello, hello. Uh, welcome. This is a super simple trick for making perspective grids in Photoshop. We're going to be using the shape tool to solve the problem of setting up vanishing points in just one single click of the mouse or, you know, tap of the pen, whatever. Uh, if you're looking at the length of this video and thinking, man, that's a long minute. Well, that's because after the quick and simple explanation, I'll slow down and get into the specifics of how to make the best use of this new approach and integrate it into a workflow for managing perspective in a few different ways within a single file. Um, let's get into it. Uh, so first things first, we need to set up our shape tool to do this. Uh, so shape tool is right here. Uh, if you don't see a polygon, right click and uh, choose it. And you'll see some options pop up here in the toolbar. Um, the first thing we need to change, uh, if this is not shape, make sure it's shape. That's the kind of asset we want to create. Fill is just the color. You can make it any color, make it contrast your canvas, black canvas, white fill, white canvas, black fill, that kind of thing. Uh, stroking, just turn off. We don't need the extra weight on our on our shape. Uh, that'll make this stuff irrelevant. This doesn't matter. We'll do that when we draw it. Uh, this just dictates how it appears when we make it. We always want a new layer for our vanishing points. Uh, these don't matter. Uh, make sure this is at zero. And these do matter. So whichever is selected, change it to freeform. Uh, from center is pretty useful. We'll keep that checked. Uh, and the last thing is star ratio. Make sure that's 1%. That's what's going to make this function. Lastly, this is the number of sides for the polygon we're going to make. But because of their settings, we, we don't have sides. So this is actually going to dictate the number of points that extend out from the center of our vanishing point. So um, I, I, I tend to use like 50 or 75, sometimes higher if it's a giant canvas or a vanishing point that's way off screen. Um, but just experiment and see which, see which works best for you. So I hit enter to confirm with that tool selected, just drag, ta-da, uh, that's it. So if, if you already have a system for managing perspective in Photoshop, then you're, you're done. Just, that's just a fast way to make the actual vanishing point itself. It's a vector, you can resize it indefinitely, you can crop and it'll stay complete, you're good to go. However, if you're new to this process or you just wanna learn some, some good tricks, stick around, I'm gonna talk about a bunch of stuff. So uh, let's get into that. I'll go ahead and delete this, so I don't need it right now. So the first thing we need to do is Get ourselves a horizon line that's where the vanishing points live uh, and there's a few ways to do that you know you can just draw one but uh, let's let's do something a little more powerful we're going to use guides uh, which are really easy to set up so go to view uh, make sure you have rulers turned on and control r is fine and once those are turned on you can click in the number bar of the ruler and drag down to create a guide super easy uh, if you grab the move tool and hover you'll see that it changes to a new reticle which lets you move that you can drag it off canvas, that's gonna matter in a minute. Uh, you can drag it away completely and it disappears. Let's just drop one right in the middle, right there. Um, and now when we draw our vanishing point out, grab the move tool, we can drop it right on that horizon line, no problem. But we don't need to guess, right? If you go to view, turn on snap, which is control shift semicolon. Remember that hotkey, it's gonna prove useful in a few minutes. And make sure that uh, view snap to guides and that will ensure that when you move this around the center always wants to hit that guide you know, within a few pixels it'll just snap to it and then you hold shift you can shift it around left and right and it'll always stay on that horizon line and you know for one point perspective quickly and easy you're good to go a couple clicks and you're there you can drop the opacity on this it's a separate layer it's a vector shape uh, and then make new layers and draw on top of it or blow it or whatever so that's, that's the simple start. Let's introduce more complexity. So of course there is two point perspective and you just hit control J to duplicate it. Hold shift and slide it across and there you go. Um, but of course you don't always want both of your points in the scene, right? You get some pretty, pretty distorted looking shapes when you do that. They recede pretty quickly um, towards the vanishing points and within like a single area, they get very distorted, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's very good for lots of stuff, especially concept art for, for games and whatnot, since video cameras, video game cameras are always, or, you know, often set up like that. Um, but to make some more like natural looking, you know, maybe cinema oriented illustrations or, or drawings and whatnot, uh, we can, we can fix that pretty easily. So let's delete that. Uh, let's name these guys, left vanishing point, right vanishing point, not quite accurate, but sufficient for this. Let's zoom way out. So. What we want to do is move one of them off the canvas, right? That'll that'll flatten out our grid and just make it feel more natural. Easiest way to do that is to make a new guide out here somewhere. 
Make sure our vanishing point is selected. Hit Control T to start our transform so we can actually see the thing clearly. Slide it over and it snaps right to center again. Um, of course, we can't see it on canvas now, but just hold Alt Shift to make sure it sizes up in ratio from the center and drag it until it covers the canvas yet again. No problem. However, uh, these are pretty far apart. You might not be able to draw accurate perspective because your, your guides are too far away to eyeball easily for some things. Uh, also easy to fix, just with that same vanishing point selected, hit Control J to duplicate it, Control T for transform, and when you hover, you'll see the reticle changes to a rotation. Give it a little rotate. It's much better. If you need more, you can repeat the process or just hit Control Alt Shift T. And Photoshop repeats the last transform as a new layer automatically. Right? And then you can select all those, hit Control E, collapse them down to a single shape. It's still a vector. You can still transform it all you want. It's just now one shape instead. Retitle it. And there you go. It's a much more natural kind of perspective setup, uh, which may be more appropriate for certain settings, certain illustrations, whatever. Right? Uh, keep in mind though, uh, one small thing, your brush will snap, just like the vanishing points. Uh, so to turn that off, just turn off snapping. Control shift colon, and then you can draw free again, no problem. Get rid of that layer. So now you're good to go, right? You can group these up call them perspective, maybe lower the opacity because they're just super present. And you begin drawing your scene. So there's like some mountains in the background, maybe a lake here, a river coming into the foreground, and you know some trees, low-lying hills in the mid-ground and foreground, and uh, some clouds. You know, simple scene, and a bird. So. You get this far, you get it all set up, you get your drawing started, and you realize, uh, I, I don't like the composition. Um, I don't like my perspective set up, my grid location. It's not working. That's okay, it's really easy to update and change these and add new ones. So let's highlight these and group them up, call that version one. We're gonna keep it just in case. And then compare it against future versions to see if we, you know, maybe we were right the first time. That certainly happens. So let's go ahead and start by duplicating it. We'll call this new one version two hide the old one. Uh, we can get rid of this drawing for now. And what we need is a new horizon line, right? So uh, let's call this one version one center. The horizon line's right in the center, more or less. Version two, we'll call high. Grab our perspective group and just use the move tool to just move them up. You know, something like that. And then drag a new guide off. Um, you can turn on snapping if you want. It doesn't have to really be that perfect, but you know, if you turn on snapping, it will be. And snap right to the center. Turn snapping back off for the drawing part. New layer. Draw the same kind of scene, right? Here's our mountains. A little bit of clouds, not much. A lot more lake because we can see so much more ground plane, right? And river coming off. Two rivers. Since we can see more ground plane, why not? Um, still have our low lying hills back here foreground hills, etc., etc. Some hills on this island thing, and a bird. So, we get to this point, and we're like, uh, yeah, it's cool, I guess, but I don't like that either. We can just keep this process going, right? Duplicate again, version three, low. Hide that one. And now maybe we wanna bring it way down here. Make something more illustrative than, than a scene, you know? Get a horizon line going. Let's put it all the way down there. All right now we have a super low horizon line. And when we make our drawing, the mountains are like they become quite inconsequential. The clouds are now a pretty big story. They got a lot of space. You can see the bottoms of them. See them receding back towards the horizon really clearly. Big epic clouds. The water is right in your face now, so it's like basically flat lines. You know, see a shoreline over here. You might see the bottoms of trees because our camera is so low, right? You might see the bottom of them instead. Don't get too distracted by my like amazing drawing, okay? Right, and all, all this stuff still exists independent of each other. So 
Um, we can hide our guides by just hitting Control colon, or going to View and Show, and hiding them there with the extras or whatever. Uh, Control H hides everything. Control colon just hides guides and such. Um, and we can go back and turn off the perspective too, so we can just see the line work, and uh, because we subgrouped everything so clearly, right? And now we can look at our illustrations and decide what what we actually like. And everything is still ready to go and set up and our guides are still waiting for us after we decide which one we want to keep okay and there's you know just just with that you're pretty good to go for most things but there's still one more thing that that comes up and that's three-point perspective right so sometimes you can just cheat big time cheat right grab your lines layer Control t to transform right click it distort and then alt shift drag the corner right dirty cheat it doesn't work for a lot of stuff though and you know once you actually start drawing more things in or painting and whatnot uh, it's a little hard to to find your perspective so to create three point it's actually super easy we already did it right when we created this vanishing point off camera we kind of did the same thing already so let's grab another horizontal one and this one is way off camera right way down here let me turn off this distracting drawing so we know that the vanishing point for the third point is way down here. Um, we do need to know where it sits horizontally as well. We're going to put it kind of dead center as you often want to with the third point. Um, grab your shape tool again. There you go. And even even that is like a pretty distorted three point, even that far down. So you can hit transform so you can see the center. Move it down. And there you go. You have a three point. When you start your drawing, your horizon's right here. I uh, say so you're like in a city setting. This is still, even with the vanishing point way down there, this is still pretty extreme perspective. Um, but you get the idea. And that's it, right? If you're kind of new to really plotting perspective like this, uh, I suggest pulling up artwork by an established professional, uh, someone you admire, you know, and use this method on top of their painting and uh, really dissect how they're setting up their perspective and uh, note how the painting makes you feel and what the perspective setup did to accomplish that feeling. Right. That'll help you figure out what perspective to use when and how to even do it. All right. So uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments or check me down on Instagram if you have any questions. And um, as always, thanks for checking it out and glad you made it this far through my one minute tutorial. Uh, subscribe if you dig it. Thanks.